Hello, it's Scott Manley here with Kerbal Space Program 1.0, and I would like to talk about launching rockets into orbit, something which uh, most of you probably already know about, but perhaps there's some new people here who are interested. But more specifically, I want to talk about how the new aerodynamics affects it. And the best way to find out how the aerodynamics is affecting anything is to use the debug menu. So Alt and F12 will bring up the debug toolbar. And there's a bunch of buttons here. You know, Cheats obviously gives you infinite fuel and everything. But under Physics, you have Display Aero Forces in Flight. And that will apply, that will create these little red velocity vector, force vectors acting on your spacecraft. You see one here pointing out the back. This is a drag vector, right? Now, if I turn the rocket just a little, you can see, oh, we've got, we've got forces acting all the way down the rocket. And what I've done by turning too hard is the forces near the front were greater than the forces at the back, so we ended up with a torque pulling the rocket over. That, of course, would be catastroph catastrophic if you attempted, say, to perform a gravity turn at the 10 kilometer mark. Um, this thing is actually fixing itself for the simple reason that we're, we're running out of fuel here and the center of mass of the rocket is moving further forwards. But if you have, say, a giant egg-like fairing on the front, you're going to find that your rockets really uh, very much want to fly backwards. Now, you can fix that by putting on uh, fins at the bottom, but you'll notice that even when SpaceX Falcon is flying, uh, it doesn't have any fins. It entirely is controlled through the thrust vectoring in the engine. So let's uh, revert flight to launch, and we'll talk about how to do a proper gravity turn. If you have been playing Kerbal Space Program with the stock aerodynamic model for a long time, then you've probably got into some very bad habits and probably launched some very cool things, but we're all about bad habits. So since we're talking about launch, we're going to go over what the newbies might need to know. Uh, press M to go to the map screen. At the bottom, you want to bring up your little uh, nav ball. In the top right of the screen, you want to click on this fuel tank so you can see the fuel you have available. Right, That will show your liquid fuel and oxidizer so you know when you're running out. Press M to come back. Uh, T will enable SAS. You want to make sure that light is on. And Z or Z, if, uh, depending which country you're from, uh, will activate 100% throttle. And very rarely do you want anything but 100% throttle. Now this whole thing, I want to uh, start going up straight away, but within a few seconds, we want to turn over by about five degrees. Now all we're doing is we're putting our velocity vector slightly sideways. This is important for the people in the pad because it means that our rocket won't immediately come back down and you know, crush them and burn them in a giant flaming ball of death. Now, remember those force vectors that we're, sh we're turning our spacecraft around? Well, the best way to avoid those force vectors turning your spacecraft around is to make sure that they are all pushing in the same direction that you have control. So, if you keep your velocity vector, right, your nav ball pointing exactly along your velocity vector, then it means that the forces are all being applied straight down your spacecraft. And so the amount of torque that's being generated to rotate your spacecraft, the amount of force that's trying to turn your spacecraft is being minimized and hopefully being kept below the limit which you can control with the, uh, the various control systems on board. Now, the gravity turn, you're kind of aiming to hit about 45 degrees uh, in the 10 kilometer region. Um, and I think I did a pretty good job. Oh, I've accidentally clicked on orbit here. That's okay. We're going to keep it until we get... Well, we're going to keep in this viewpoint until we run out of fuel in this stage. Um, I've brought this down to about 30 degrees on the horizon here. And now it's switching to the next stage. We're high enough up that the aerodynamics are no longer such a concern. Instead, we want to make sure that we're actually going upwards into a suitable orbit. So, this is still looking good. We're firing our engine in this second stage here. You see it's generating a little amount of thrust, but it's enough to be accelerating us. But in the map, we can see the ballistic trajectory we are going to follow. 
And our current Apple apps is about 60 kilometers. And that's pretty good. I'm just going to keep this uh, following this. Now, if you find that your velocity vector is starting to get too close to the horizon, you can, you can push your orbit a little higher. If you're going too high, you can push it lower. The higher up in the atmosphere you are, the, the more you can deviate from this velocity vector. It is all kind of complicated, but it will become second nature to you. Now we're up to about 95 kilometers, 94, 95, 96, 97. We're going to burn out at 100. We're just going to press the X key to cancel our thrusters. So we still have a little bit of fuel left here, but we're saving that because this orbit is fine, but in fact it lands back on the surface. What we want to do is turn it into a circle, and to turn it into a circle we have to fire our engines here so that we uh, we turn the thing more circular. If you imagine what this really is, is part of an ellipse. The ellipse kind of goes down inside the planet, and then it actually continues to about there. So by accelerating here, we're going to lift this internal one. Oh look, you can actually see it here by mousing over it. There is where that orbit actually goes. See that? How very, very useful for me to show you this. So when we accelerate at the furthest point from the planet, also known as Apoaps, we will hopefully lift this up until it, it ends up outside the planet and we are saved from falling back and being all sorts of embarrassed. So we just move our time forward until we're about, uh, about 30 seconds away or so. Then turn the spacecraft to point along this. Now in sandbox mode, you might just be able to click on the prograde button, but that is just fine. And then throttle up to 100% by pressing the Z key or the Z key, depending upon where you hail from. So look, we can watch this. I'm using the mouse cursor. We can see this is coming up, coming up. It's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. And there. When we get this above 70, or when these flip, then just press X. There we go, 111 by 99. That is a solid, solidly good orbit here. And we have enough fuel left. The important thing is we have enough fuel left to go home. If you can't get up here and you have no fuel, then you're in trouble because you can't get home and you need a rescue mission. Anyway, picking the exact gravity turn is actually kind of a hard thing to do unless you have huge amounts of analytical tools. So I kind of want to show you that it's not disastrous if you get the wrong turn selection, right? So this one is an example of a turn which is far too uh, slow, which means we end up going up far too quickly. Uh, into a ballistic trajectory, we have to cut our engine sooner and then spend more time burning fuel up here, circularizing. And, and thanks to the magic of something called the Oberth effect, this is less efficient. It's actually analogous to, uh, instead of walking around a rectangular field, walking across the diagonal instead. It's a shortcut, and it's actually an energetic shortcut, which is a fancy way of saying we are doing something more efficiently. So yeah, I uh, performed the same action, action as before. We circularize the orbit, and we see that we have 34 units of fuel left, which isn't much less than the better trajectory I flew for a first estimate. Now, here is an example where we overcook the gravity turn, and early on, what I do is I begin to say, uh oh, this is too steep, and try to correct it. So I keep my nose high, uh, to try and stop my uh, velocity vector dropping too low and basically us turning over and crashing into the ocean. If you have fins on your spacecraft, you may not be able to perform that. You may find your spacecraft inexorably pulling its nose down and then diving into the ocean like a ginormous lawn dart. That is where you essentially don't have enough pitch authority to counteract the aerodynamic torque you've placed on it. Fancy way of saying if you put fins on it then you keep it stable but you may not be able to pick where stable is pointing. While we're burning less fuel in space, we did have to burn a lot more fuel early on because we were going edge on into the airstream. But how much did it affect our final fuel bill? Well, not that much as it happens. 
The point I'm trying to make here is don't agonize over getting the perfect gravity turn. Uh, you're going to get within about 20 to 30% of the, the best one just by, by guessing. As long as you keep your rocket stable and don't have it spinning out of control, that's where the major losses are going to happen. Concentrate instead on building aerodynamic ro rockets and making sure that they are actually flying in a straight line. And then of course try to figure out how to bring them safely back to the surface through the, the heating effects of the atmosphere. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.